Oh, oh dude, it dude, smells good. brand new. Holy crap. Oh my god. What the f <laughs> Alright, yeah, this might have to be uh, cleaned off first. It says keep out. <laughs> Oh, what in the welcome world? home. Oh, is this the housewarming gift? Yeah. Let's go. Take a listen to our doorbell. This is the wealthy person chime. <laughs> Lovely. I don't even know how I should start this. Welcome everybody to the Ultramotive Arizona house. This has been a lot of work in the making and uh, I can safely say that it is well worth it and I'm excited to show you guys what we have here. But first things first, we have the vehicles, the fleet. This is what has made it down so far. Of course, we have the pumpkin, my proudest automotive achievement. This girl's been down here actually the whole past winter, the Exorcist. It's been chilling at friends' places. Now it finally has a garage to live in. This thing also fits in very well around here. I can't wait to go explore some of the Arizona dunes and off-road territories. These are the vehicles, and I wanna say we safely brought down all vehicles with the worst gas mileage known to man. So it's already been kind of an expensive start, but we'll trickle down the, uh, the Japanese cars later on. The next thing that you guys will notice is that we have one, two, three, four. We, we have a four car garage. This is insane. The driveway alone. We have three whole vehicles here and you could still park one, two, three, four. I mean, you, you could probably easily put six to seven cars in here. And then right over here, we have side RV trailer or secret cars if I want to hide them for you guys. This is where my trailer gets to live. I mean, this actually goes infinitely into the backyard. So one car hoarder may say that you could, if anything, put probably countless more cars back there and onward. The conclusion to all of this is that we have room. So it already, you know, it's a, it's a lot newer of a house than actually what I even came from. So it's already got standard epoxied floors. The lighting is awful. Not sure what we'll do about that. We have some storage racks up there. You got some turbos, got some titanium exhaust pieces. You have the garage cabinets and stuff with all the goodies and everything. And this is the bay where I want the Mercy, the Camaro and stuff to live just because it's easy to just back straight out. But we have another bay. I'll just open her up and you come over here or if you want to be a little fun you got a little passageway right through here and then this is where the egg the uh, Haley's RAV4 it resides for now this thing actually hangs outside it actually doesn't fit in any garage um, anyone who's owned a Raptor before may have uh, come across that issue but it's it's just too big frankly so it'll be outside soaking in in the warm Sun for every time I have to get into it this summer we have room and uh, this is frankly the dream setup. This is all I can ask for and there's definitely gonna be a lot more room for more projects and whatnot that we can do in the future. And if we come over here, you guys may also notice that this is a corner lot, which is another thing I really wanted because it's just private. There has significantly been a lot less cars that travel through here than even the Seattle house. Just good privacy and also plenty of parking for friends and people to come and hang out. Just stay right here. Now check this out. We have what I would call a freaking corridor. Like, what do you even do? This is the most grand entry that I could ever imagine for myself. You just have an internal walkway. The ceiling height, I mean, this is a pattern that will continue throughout this house. The ceiling height is remarkable. Follow me in here. So if you are bored and uh, I don't answer the door in time, you can entertain yourself to a little bit of uh, some putt-putt. You already know, we, we gotta make one for the, for the video. Boom, call me Tiger Woods. This is the front lawn area entry point. Voila. Actually, wait, hang on, hang on. We gotta do this the, the what is it? The Vanity Fair, the Vogue way. Greetings. Welcome to our establishment. This is the little entry circle right here. We have these beautiful prints. Shout out to Troy at Gorilla Mad. He made these right here. 
anyone who gets to come over to the crib will get a complimentary De Augustini little model car because I have collected too many over all of the years. And they, they got some cool stuff too. A lot of it is, is vintage American muscle, but at the same time, you have like a Cobra R right there. I know my boy Zach's gonna want that. And so we have plenty more and there's even more to restock when this runs out. So literally you will be getting automotive gifts when you come to this facility. Cat number one. This is Zilla, named after Godzilla, named after the most fabulous Group A racing car of all time, the R32 Skyline. That's the first cat. Keep the cats in mind, there's gonna be more of them. This is the first room. This is the office that has been dedicated to Haley's. She's got her dream car. Work in progress still. You'll see a lot of things are work in progress in this place. come through the entryway. Behold our grand open layout, just living slash kitchen slash dining area, all of it together. I mean, this makes up kind of the, the most of the house. The other thing that's crazy too, the ceilings. Like, I'm, I'm a 6'2 man and I, I, not even a ladder may get me to touch whatever is up there. All of this has come down in the moving truck all with us from the Seattle house. And uh, I guess we could start out with, you know, this beautiful decorative shelving piece right here, starting out with all of my show awards and the stormtroopers. Some of the mercies that we've collected so far, there, there's gonna be a lot more mercies you might see on this tour. Uh, I kind of have a thing for that car if you guys can't tell. We have some Forza stuff, some R8 memorabilia, some Legos, some other broken car parts that all have stories to them. And then a bunch of my Hot Wheels and just miscellaneous toys from all over the years. Those are all cool and I could talk about those forever, but what is cooler than all of that that I most recently acquired is if you come over here, this is a Mercilago candle. And I think it's only fair that we do light it for the one time. I don't know what's even gonna happen to this thing over time as, uh, as it would melt away. Oh my gosh, it's lit. Oh yeah, it's, uh, the wax is already dripping a little bit right there. Ultramotive neon sign by U-Turn Neon is the company that sent that out and uh, just a couple other stuff here and there. Of course, if you're bored, we have the most fabulous lobby magazines and catalogs for people to look through. Cat number two. What up, Zeus? This is Zeus Z-Boy. He is uh, one of the coolest looking cats I've ever seen. He's got little cheetah stripes, cheetah spots, and uh, he actually usually has way more energy than this right now, but he's catnapping in the middle of the day. This is my lovely grand kitchen. Similar kitchen to what we previously had. Very dark, very masculine, I would say. One of the things I've discovered so far is that this microwave is very powerful as uh, somebody forgot that tinfoil was still on his tacos as he put it in there and it kind of engulfed and may or may not have almost burnt the house down initially. And the other beautiful thing is that this is the dining room area and it's not like a fully separate dining room that a lot of houses have, which I think is frankly useless because you never use your formal dining room. This house doesn't really have a formal dining room. It just has kind of a nook extension of the kitchen and that's what's perfect for this table setup right here. And we still have some things to uh, hang up as we have the exorcist cross that Hennessy gave me and uh, a couple steering wheels. Now this is where the house gets a little bit complex. Try and bear with me here because we're gonna go into each of the rooms that branch out from the main area, starting with uh, the pantry, which isn't that fascinating. This is what I've designated as my office. It is far too roomy than what I'm used to in that literally, like, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's kind of echoey in here right now. So that's what, that's what all of these are for. We're gonna put these up eventually and see if those help. Also, the walls, they actually just got repainted and everything. So everything that uh, would usually be in the background for the gaming videos, for the face cam setup, everything, it's not hung up yet. Obviously we still haven't unpacked like the play buttons and like all the other little decorative stuff. And this is the setup. This is where the magic happens right here. And you have the cats that could just hang out with me over here. Whoa, don't fall. It's funny because this room literally has like a little cubby area. This house actually used to have a hallway right here and then they built a wall. Now that it's blocked off as this weird little closet, but not closet, but not livable. 
don't know, it's a weird space. I might set up my uh, vinyl cutters and stuff here. So if I wanted to print out like a livery or anything like that, like this could be the work area for that. It's, it's probably one of the strangest places in this whole house because I don't really know what to even do with that space and you can't really like block it off or hide it. That was one wing. Next wing over here, we have the spare rooms and the spare beds. So this is just another guest spare bed right here. They all come with their own attached bathrooms, which is really nice. So anyone that wants to move in or just spend a week here, we don't have to worry about them sharing and going into our bathrooms. Now what's crazy, you'll see another pattern of this is that the closets in this house are a little uh, excessive in that we've put a lot of our uh, wasted stuff and boxes and whatnot all in here. But the fact that this is like a guest room closet, this is massive. Like how much, you, that's a lot of clothes to string out. You have multiple levels that can go all throughout here. But yeah, you could, I mean, you could put a mattress in this guest closet and oh boy, the closets will get bigger than this. So don't even worry. So another guest room and it's exactly the same thing. You could see that there's another bathroom in there. And then you can see once again, it's a closet that I could stand in. So too big. One of the things I want to touch on that people are probably wondering is how could I even afford all of this? And the simple answer to it, if people haven't maybe guessed or assumed, is that we are renting this place out. So the house that I have up in Seattle, I still own that house and I will actually be renting that house out to a close friend of ours and they're gonna live there and basically, you know, I'm gonna collect the rent earnings from that and basically offset that for renting down here. Why would you do that? Well, one, I am not in the position to literally buy this level of house additionally with keeping the other place. But I also don't think it's a smart move right now to sell that house and then buy a house right down here. The market is definitely not in as good of a place as it was back when I bought my Seattle house. So I would definitely be getting screwed over with interest rates. And who knows if the market continues to go down and I bought in when it's at the top. You never really know on these things, but all I do know for sure is that my first time ever moving across the country or to a different place, I wanna feel it out safely without fully committing and putting all my money trapped in it. And that's why we're gonna be renting it out for at least we have like 15 months so far. Feel it out, see how how, you know see how we like it and then take steps from there and it could allow for a new goal if we do like this area that maybe I could work towards acquiring another place here down the line this is the master this is our our living quarters right here and cat number three shady oh, she loves the camera she's on her queen tower we need a lot of rugs we don't have many rugs yet and uh, i found that when you wake up obviously you're not gonna have socks on if you sleep otherwise you're weird the first thing you do when you get out of bed is you know your, your bare feet touch the floors they're freezing cold i don't know if that's just an arizona house thing or whatnot clearly without carpet um, your toes. It's it's a little cold every morning. It'd be nice to just get some rugs in here. Now this is where things get a little beyond what even I need. We have his, so I could have whatever I want and you know, Haley can't touch it whatsoever. And then we have hers. And of course she's gonna have the bigger one. The girl always needs, you know, the bigger bathroom space. We have his closet. This is already a much bigger closet than what I had up in Seattle. We have, of course, all of the ultramotive items across the span of all of the years, all still collected. I'm never gonna get rid of any single piece of merchandise as long as I just have, you know, one, one example of every item that we've produced in the past. And then this is hers. Like, bruh. Like, put the air mattress here right now and you could just start charging rent in this closet. This is the biggest closet I have ever seen for a house that's this small. This house is about like 3,500 square feet total. I mean, for how grand it is, it's actually not that much square footage. I don't know, I just feel like this closet has no business being that big for the size of house that it is. And then if you go from the master, right over here you have a guest bathroom, you have another closet and then you have the laundry room right in here. And then this door leads you to the garage area. You guys got it all mental mapped and figured out, right? All right, I'll take that as a yes. So the last thing is the backyard. And I'm sure some other questions that people may have is what happened to the previous people that used to live with us as we've, you know, collected an assortment of roommates over the years back up in the Seattle house. And frankly, we've gotten to a point now where, uh, None of them really 
do live with us and none of them really followed us down here. So Dustin, very key friend, and of course we had the whole 335 build series, everything with him. Well, he went back home with family over to the Kansas area. He still has his car. That thing's still working fine, I hope. I mean, BMW, they might have problems here and there. Lance also back up in Iowa, back with family. Zach was moved in for a little bit, but then he also moved back with family, but moving back with family means that he's here in Arizona because his family is in Arizona. So the cool thing is, is that we'll be with Zach all the time. Justin has never actually moved in or roomed, but he's a close friend of mine. He's over in California currently, but make easy trips across from SoCal over to here as well. But basically we've just gotten to a point now, yeah, where we don't have any friend roommates or anything in the house and there's no bad blood, no beef, no drama in between that, but that's just sometimes how life has panned out. But this is the backyard. And uh, there is something very huge that's missing from this backyard that was kind of a takeaway of this place that we found. Yeah, there's no pool. And we're going into uh, the start of Arizona summer. I mean, it's already like 85 degrees right now as the sun's going down and it's gonna get worse. Now we do have what you wouldn't need in the summer, which is a hot tub. I think this is gonna come very handy in the winter time, but there she is. Jack Ultra grills can happen over here. We got the built-in grill set up to the yard. If you wanna garnish your steaks, you have lemons. When life gives you lemons, which frankly, it's given me a lot of them right here. Actually, I do have a secret. Um, we actually did bring Dustin with us and he's been in here the whole time. No, I'm just kidding. We actually haven't put anything in here. I've never actually had a shed before, but if we collect too many car parts, you already know. Dude, it was so hot in there. Holy crap. So we also have a sauna, <laughs> a little sunbathing after the sun's gone down. In compromise to not having a pool though, this gazebo does come set up with misters and they do work. There's also some other cool outdoor backyard lighting and we brought our backyard set up from Seattle, which is nothing fancy as you can see. We just have the freaking camping chairs and then just one little couch here, but it gets the job done. So this is basically it. This is the rundown of the Ultramotive AZ house. And uh, I can safely tell you guys that for me, this is a solid upgrade just on privacy. Of course, this is all resided in a gated neighborhood on top of being the corner lot, as well as just the layout of the house. You have so much more room on the inside. It's not as dark, it's not as claustrophobic. You have a backyard that you could open up to and just feel like you're on a vacation every day. This house just, I feel like space is just the one word that this house just provides as well as Arizona as a whole it just has way more room to exist there's so much less traffic the roads are so much better paved and uh, it's better for cars like these where I could actually truly enjoy them but if you made it to this point in the video thank you for watching through all of it uh, thank you guys for everything as always and uh, this is gonna be Jack Ultra Motive signing it off right here <music>